The minute you're arrested, the family you have, the circle of friends you have, the network of extended family, people that you work with, all believe you're guilty. Where there's smoke, there's fire. People who knew me a lifetime, a lifetime, presumed I was guilty because if the government arrested you, you must have done something wrong. It's only now, 25 years after my arrest, my arrest was in 1997, that people are realizing that prosecutors prosecuted innocent people. There's no way to keep your mental health the moment you've been arrested and the moment you start to lose everything. So I was set to retire. I had a home. I lost everything financially. I lost all my friends. I had nobody who wanted to talk to me without, except for my parents. And um, when I went into trial, uh, I refused to plead guilty. 96% of the people agree to plead guilty, um, not because they are, but because they're threatened with 25 years to life for anything. 25 years to life unless you plead. They do not, if everybody in the United States went to trial instead of plead guilty, the system would break down, but everybody's too scared. So I refused to plead guilty. My, I was convicted on tax evasion. I didn't, I didn't owe money. I knew I didn't owe money. And they literally tortured me for a period of 12 years between my arrest and my first, um, my first trial. They would bring me into small rooms that were the size of a closet or a bathroom with these big jlubby men who were like six feet tall wearing raincoats like mafia. And we'd be in a room and they'd say things to me like it's Thanksgiving and by Christmas we'll have you in a prison with somebody raping you. And I like thought to myself, these, they're insane. If you don't plead guilty, we're gonna, go, we're gonna send you to prison for life and I thought, over what? Because you're still a little, you still at the beginning of this process think that there's justice and there's, there's still a little hope that there might be a sane person. But once you're in the system, you realize it is so corrupt, it is beyond fixing. So my mental health was altered at the time of my arrest, was altered at the time of the trial. When I walked into the trial and I looked at the jury, I knew that they would um, say guilty and it took them one half hour. They didn't look at a single piece of paper. And when you walk into prison, the experience is so humiliating and so devastating. Your first strip search is like nothing you've ever known before. In front of a stranger, you're naked and they can tell you to do anything. And at that moment, that first day, that first strip search, if you know for sure that whoever you were outside of prison, however you were outside of prison, is nothing you can be inside of prison. And that all the emotion that you've been trained to show and the feelings you've been trained to have and the encouragement for you to speak your mind, all those things are opposite in prison. In prison, you have to shut down. No emotion, no crying, no laughing, no um, sharing any stories that can be used against you, no nothing. So you have to become a different person. When you do that, it costs you your identity, which costs you your mental health.